Minecraft 1.17, also known as the Caves and Cliffs update. What I decided to do is survive 100 days in this new version of Minecraft with a couple of goals in mind, which include things such as obtaining the Dragon Egg and the Elytra, slaying a Warden, and befriending our very own Axolotl. If you didn't know, 100 days in Minecraft is roughly around 33 hours worth of playtime, and it's not the easiest things to actually pull off. So if you guys could hit that subscribe button, that would honestly mean the world to me. And you guys can always change your mind later. Without further ado, let's begin. Day 1. And so we begin. The beginning was actually super simple. All I really did was collect some essential resources. This including things like wood, upgrading my tools, from wooden ones to stone ones. Then I found this little bit of a mini cliff. I decided to make it into my home. I created it into a cave and this is what it looks like. Afterwards, I decided to make two furnaces. Don't ask why. Then I created a chest and stored a bunch of stuff in it. Even though if I died, I kind of lose it anyways. But I just needed some free inventory space. Then we hopped out of the base and I found some berries. And I was just like, okay, not the best food source. But it's still a food source. So I decided to take it. For the majority of that day, honestly, I was just walking around aimlessly looking for just stuff. I found this mountain and on the side of the mountain I found some coal. So obviously I grabbed it. Afterwards, I found this very strange looking mineral. It ended up being one of the new minerals that they actually added into 1.17, which was copper. Now, I have no idea what this is used for, and honestly, I, I just liked how it looked, so I took it, you know? I took it, I was gonna smelt it, and figure it out along the way. That being said, I looked around a little bit more. I'm not sure what I was really looking for, again, I found this really high and tall cliff and I decided not to climb it for some reason because there was a creeper underneath, even though I was trying to go like above and beyond it. But I decided to turn back. I found some more of that copper stuff, pretty nice stuff, you know, climbed a miniature hill, then started speed bridging for some reason. But then at the corner of my eye, lo and behold, we got ourselves a sheep. Instead of wanting to breed the sheep, I killed them. Relentlessly. Besides that, I also managed to get ourselves some coal. And now that we have wool, we can actually make a bed, which is essential, especially if I don't want to die. We slept through that first night. Days 2 to 5. The second day begins. Now mind you, these couple of days, I genuinely spent killing salmon and cod. That's all I did. And I I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I, I spent days killing salmon and cod. But don't worry, I knew what I was doing. I've already done one of these 100 day challenges. And on my first ever 100 day challenge, food was one of the biggest problems. I was going to make sure that throughout this entire series, Food would never be even a thought in my mind. Day 6 to 10. Within this time frame, I basically had all the fish I can ever ask for within a Minecraft survival world, at least for this challenge. And so, I then realized I actually have to cook this food. I don't know why it didn't hit me prior. So, I decided to look in our chest and we luckily had a bunch of cobblestone from when we first made this place. So that was convenient. We crafted them into furnaces, but then it also hit me that we don't have any fuel. Very little, very little. We had a little bit, but not too much. And so we go back to the lovely mountains we found the sheep at and search for more coal. Mind you, there was a lot of strange generation in terms of like coal, where sometimes it wouldn't even be in a clump, it would just be a singular piece of coal. So this honestly extended it by a bunch of time. But I do have to say, eventually it did work out at the end and we got a bunch of coal. Then we started smelting the fish, nice and easy, you know, nice and crispy. I was excited, you know, all my hard work had paid off. Days 10 to 15. Once we got food out of the way, then we decided to actually go mining. You know, it is the caves and cliffs update. So I decided to take a look at the caves portion of everything. We were going for a bit and didn't hit anything until I hit a spot of water. It was kind of strange to me because I've hit water countless times before in normal Minecraft. I just didn't expect the cave to be different, but it ended up actually being a ginormous underwater cave. I decided to go down there with a bunch of doors just to realize that it actually connects straight to the beach that we live right next to. So that was kind of dumb of me for not noticing in the first place. Despite it being a very easily accessible cave, I decided to still go further down into it because it actually had stuff in it. So I wanted to kind of explore it a bit because it's something that I haven't seen before in Minecraft. After squirming around for a while, we eventually find this thing that's a cave. What I didn't realize is the place that we landed at actually had a little bit of a friend next to me. A creeper. Oh, 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 holy sh oh, 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 oh
Oh my god. The series almost just ended. <laughs> just for me to realize that I actually had nothing at all. I decide to swim out. Afterwards, I find my house and use the smelted iron that I had, which is one of the first things I probably should have made with the iron. A shield. Days 16 to 20. After this, we decide to tackle the caves once again. I go back to that same underwater cave that I found and decided to start mining. I got a bunch of resources, primarily iron, but I did also pick up a good amount of copper. Also, FYI, I still don't know what the heck copper does. This lasted for quite a bit. You know what I was hyped for though? I was super excited to see a little bit of like a branch out from the cave system to get into some of these new like biomed cave systems, you know? There's a couple of them, not too many on this snapshot. And I really wanted to see one, but I didn't end up seeing one within this cave, which was kind of disappointing. After getting a buttload of ores, I decided to head back up and smelt them all. I also decided to make a full set of iron gear. Days 21 to 25. I'm not one to give up, so instead of just sitting there and being like, okay, the cave was okay, it's fine, I'll deal with it. No, I decided to go in a different direction. I wanted to find one of these unique cave biome things. On the way down, we actually found one of the new blocks known as Grimestone. It's a little interesting, we saw a little bit of it earlier, but didn't realize that it was actually a new block. I just thought it was Blackstone or something, you know? Along the way, we actually do manage to find a cave. Now this cave was actually very similar to the last cave, you know, besides the fact that there was a lot more grimestone there, but there was also a bit more lava and I ended up just mining a bunch more copper and iron. I did find some gold though, so that was a little bit of a plus. But at the very back end of the cave sat an amethyst geode. Now I know I sound smart, but I have no clue what it is. Absolutely none. You know what I do afterwards? I look at it for a bit, you know, I sit there, then I go straight back to mining. That's what I do, because I didn't want to touch it before knowing what it exactly was. I didn't know the rarity of anything, and if it was a rare occurrence, I didn't want to miss out on an opportunity. Oh, right, and I also found diamonds. Apparently, there's an increased chance of you finding these sorts of diamonds within the new cave structures, so that's a bit of a plus. Days 26 to 35. This duration is a little extended for simplicity reason, but Blackstone takes longer to mine, not to mention just exploring these places. They are massive! They are massive structures underground. So, I'm just sitting there exploring everything. After a bunch of mining, I then finally hit this weird, strange looking cave. Now, the caves usually are a mixture of a bunch of stuff, but this cave was actually within the negative Y levels. For you guys that don't know, you can actually go below Y level 0 now, and they actually extended it, which is kind of sick. The cave in general was all made out of grindstone and nothing else. It was super dark and super hard to see. I also got a little freaked out because I didn't want to meet the warden yet, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think I was prepared for that kind of experience. We explored it and a bit of the mineshaft that it also carried, and looked around a bit. Didn't find anything too out of the ordinary, but quickly after we decided to head back up. Days 36 to 40. Obviously from a long mining trip, like that one, I had to smell a whole bunch of ores. Not to mention, I did a little bit of research as to what some of the stuff is, but I was still a little confused because there wasn't much information about them, but I was considered living there. Then it also hit me, I also do need to go to the nether, because like, how else am I supposed to go to the end? So then, I started walking a bit with some water buckets. I couldn't find much, but eventually I did find a lava pool and created a very scuffed nether portal, but after making that scuffed nether portal, I decided to light it, go into it, Look at it for like two seconds and come right back out. I was like, I wasn't ready for this. Days 41 to 55. A huge chunk of this time was also spent on taking the ores that are smelted out of the furnace, put back into the chest. But what I also decided to take a look into is if I was able to make an enchantment table. I was actually a little confused about the recipe with this and everything, but we did end up having a sugarcane farm. So I decided to take some of the sugarcane from the sugarcane farm, replant a bit of it so we can get some more later on, create some paper, but then realize to make books I need leather. And I looked around and I was like, shoot, there's no cows around here. So, you know, I went back to the mountains because that's usually where I find stuff. Past the mountains is actually this little bit of a valley and a little bit of an island. On that island, lo and behold, there were cows. I... I murdered them too. Even, even though I should have bred them. After I got my newly obtained leather, I decided to finally make the book. After making the book, we made the enchantment table and placed it down. Days 56 to 65. This next bit was actually done during a live stream because I actually stream on Twitch. 
So I was just talking to my chat and showing them around the world. Don't know why that was not the most optimal use of my time, but I thought I'd just leave it in there. On the bright side, once I showed them the amethyst geode that we had, they actually told me that I can mine into it and it would give me crystals. Not to mention, they will regrow as long as the primary block is still there. So that was really useful information. After that, I go back up to my base and I explain to them how I have a buttload of copper and I don't know what to do with it. They then told me that I needed two copper and one amethyst to make a telescope or what the game likes to call spy glasses. I don't know, don't ask me. <laughs> ask Mojang. I'm just playing the game, dude. I then ask them what else copper is even used for, and they actually tell me that it's also used to make a lightning rod. We actually end up making three of these because I randomly decide to put three copper like that. Whatever. It was a very simple recipe, so I didn't even need my chat's help for that, so I'm gonna take the credit for that one. After this, I then went on a voyage of sorts, but I saved the quartz to the base. I wanted to find some more interesting caves, and I thought, if these are the cave generations that are in this biome, let me try going into a different one and testing my luck on there. Though we did find an interesting structure underneath the ground. Yeah boy wanted more caves. Day 66 to 70. So we went mining once again. Dug down for quite some time and then we eventually found a little bit of an opening. This opening led to a huge cavern. The thing about this cavern is it's actually one of the most profitable. That being said, this is also within the negative numbers. This is also diamond level, so there was plenty of diamonds found all over the place. This cave finding is quite literally the reason I have most of the diamonds during this playthrough. Because Y equals 11 is no longer the place where you can find diamonds. Trust me, I tried. I kept going deeper and deeper. I also noticed there were things like pillars all over the place. Not to mention, there are these like lakes that are underneath the water if you go underneath and through them there's actually another cave on the other side i went through one of these and i was actually surprised the fact that they made these in-depth caves at the very end of the cavern there was actually a mine shaft and i decided to fully look into this one unlike the last one which i kind of half looked at and then went straight back up because i needed to smelt a bunch of stuff and finally after exploring the mine shaft and collecting some more ores i eventually reached this place where there's a little bit of an opening i decide to explore it a bit and lo and behold it was a bit of a drop but what the drop actually entailed was an entire underwater cavern i'm not even joking when i say this like the structure itself was freaking awesome and i wanted to live there day 71 to 80 now this part actually took a while because I was trying to backtrack the way I came from but I couldn't find it. So at the end of the day, I tried doing it, I got hella lost, I had to get back up and, you know, locate my base again using coordinates. So that's what I did. And at the very end of it, I finally managed to get back to my house. It's a little cave that I have. And I went straight to work because I knew that I didn't have that much time left. I decided to make a full set of diamond gear with the diamond stuff that I had. I then remembered I actually heard about this one thing that got implemented within this version of Minecraft that actually helps with carrying over stuff from one place to another. The thing that I'm referring to is known as a Minecraft bundle. Now what this thing basically does is it has two slots and you can fill it up with two sets of 64 of items. Now the cool thing about this is it only takes up one slot of inventory space. Though what makes this special is the simple fact that you can put things such as a 64 stack of blocks and it'll take up one of the slots. But you can also put things like ender pearls, like a singular ender pearl will only take up one out of the 64. You can put ender pearls in there alongside torches, lapis, anything really, until you hit 64 of that specific item that you put into the bundle. The thing is, I didn't actually know how to craft this so I did have to ask my chat about it, but after asking my chat about it, they basically told me I need to go hunt down some rabbits. Now again, I was running pretty late in terms of what I wanted to do within the schedule that I had planned out, so I had to be quick. So then we booked it, right? We ran outside, started running around looking for rabbits all over the place. Eventually, I did find a few. I killed them for their rabbit hide and then brought it back to the base. After crafting that, I stored a whole bunch of stuff there and we were on the move. Nothing special actually happened on the way there besides the fact that I did bump into a dark oak forest. I just decided to get a sapling and a bit of it just for the house that I was going to build down there. And alas, we reached the coordinates. At this point, I did want to speed things up and one of the goals of the series was also to make a house. So that's what I began. It's nothing too special and don't make fun of it. I'm not the best builder. But it was still something I was somewhat proud of. It didn't look that bad. 
Not to mention, I really kind of like the color palette I went for. But I did forget one thing. Our original nether portal was still at the old area. Luckily for us, the immense amount of iron that we actually bought, I then decided to make into some buckets. After making a large amount of buckets, I then went on to explore the cave a little bit more, and lo and behold, there was actually a lava pool pretty nearby. I then proceed to actually take a bunch of them in buckets and head back. Right next to it is actually where I build the nether portal, and I think it was a pretty okay location for it. The, the portal building process took a, a little longer than uh, it should have. And that was it. I was ready to get into business. We were going to the nether and finding everything we needed from there. First things first was obviously to light the nether portal. After doing that, we then entered in. I'd say we only really traveled around 300 blocks in the nether before finding our very first bastion. At first I was a little iffy as to whether or not I should go in, but eventually I convinced myself that it'd be for the greater good. This was a really risky play, and I don't really regret it because I didn't die, but there was a really high percent chance that I would have been completely destroyed by a piglin boot. Luckily for us it was all engulfed in netherrack, and I was able to get to the main room with the chest with taking close to almost no damage. It was a little cheeky, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Days 81 to 85. Now this wasn't the most interesting of gameplay because what we primarily did during this time was just traverse, you know, across the nether as I normally would, looking for a nether fortress. So I decided to sum it up pretty quickly. It was around roughly 700 blocks away from the bastion itself, uh, but we eventually still managed to find the fortress. Pretty close by, you know, it could have been worse. A lot worse, actually. Upon reaching there, I met its welcoming committee, the wither skeletons, and some of its distant blazes. But eventually, I did manage my way around and found a spawner and started farming for some blaze rods. It was a lot of burning, as I like to say, it's a lot of arson. A lot of, a lot of arson involved. Uh, but at the end of the day, we got the amount we needed. On the way back, there was actually a warped fungus biome. And if you guys didn't know, endermen love spawning in the warped fungus biome. So I decided to camp there a bit and decided to kill a bunch of endermen. It wasn't too chaotic and eventually I did end up getting around 11 ender pearls. And yes, okay, I know I had gold in my inventory and I know I didn't trade with the piglins, okay? Don't call me out on it. Surprisingly, on our way back there was also a bunch more endermen so I decided to kill them because why not? Extra pearls just make it easier on us in the long run. So after all of that, we finally decide to head back to our base. Once we get back, I store a bunch of stuff in the chest. I then begin on an underground sugarcane farm and you'll see exactly why that is. Somewhere within transferring between the old base and the new base, I lost my enchantment table. I don't know where it's gone, so I had to make a whole new one. And so this is why I needed the paper. So post making that, I also decided to go out into the world and find some cows. Then I made a bit of a wheat farm and decided to reproduce them. Days 86 to 90. Some time has passed and I've done a couple of things, but the one thing I couldn't actually manage to do is find a sheep. I couldn't find sheep! So, so my whole plan to bed bomb the dragon wasn't actually something I was able to do. And believe me, I did try for a bit. I spent possibly even a good 20 to 40 minutes looking for sheep. Still nothing, I don't, I don't know why. I mean, when searched, I did end up finding chickens. I, I don't want chickens, but I found chickens. I honestly didn't mind. I was willing to try killing the ender dragon without any beds. I decided to go back up to the surface, and this was it. This is when things got a little bit more serious. I threw an eye of ender and decided to follow it for quite a bit. Luckily for us, the place that I decided to base in wasn't actually that far away from the stronghold, but it was, it was still somewhat of a decent amount away. I'd say that the stronghold was roughly 1500 blocks away, but luckily for us, midway through, we actually had to take boat to cross an ocean, which made the trip a lot quicker. Despite how fortunate we were with Eye of Enders, we actually didn't need that many. Most of the Eye of Enders that I threw up into the sky actually fell right back down to the floor, and I was able to repick them up and reuse them. The time I took killing those Endermen I probably could have used on something else, but it's a little too late now to change that up. After a whole bunch of rowing <coughs> boat pun, uh, and walking, I finally found the stronghold. I decided to dig straight down because I had the water bucket, and I was feeling confident. I was feeling pretty confident about myself. Scoured the place until eventually, finding the portal frame. This was it. This was part of the big goals. Now, I'm not actually sure if this version tweaked the ender dragon at all or the end fight, so I was a little bit scared. Though, due to that fact, I actually forgot to bring a bow at all. And so I had arrows, just not a bow or any string to craft a bow. It was very pointless. And without thinking twice, I lit up the portal and jumped straight into it. 
I created two stations just in case that the Enderman got a little bit too mad at me. This ensures that there's actually a place to go to if I get a lot of Endermen mad at me for accidentally looking at them. But they can't hit me due to the fact that it's a two block high area. I did notice that they actually tweaked the nether sky a bit. It was very subtle but I was still able to notice it. Due to the lack of arrows we actually had to go to the crystals themselves one at a time. I actually went through every single one of these. The lower ones were a little easier to get but eventually we did in fact get every single one. And there were a couple times that the dragon kind of pushed me off but you know I'm kind of goaded at MLG bucketing so ain't even worried about that ain't even worried about that anyways after getting all of the crystals we then proceeded to go right into the middle i was really hoping that the concept of killing the dragon was still the same thing and they didn't change anything fundamental and luckily i was right they didn't change anything so all i had to do was stand in the middle wait for it to land and strike its head a few rotations afterwards and it was done we have slain the ender dragon the thing is, I was in the middle of the portal when this happened, so I actually got caught up in the portal, but I guess it realized that I didn't actually want to go into the portal, so it teleported me back into the end, safe and sound. I thought I was going to deal a lot of fall damage, but surprisingly, I didn't. Shortly afterwards, obviously, I would claim my trophy, the dragon egg. But another one of the goals that I actually picked up off of the last 100 days video I did, I wanted an elytra. I know this was going to take up a lot of the time that I actually had, but it was definitely one of the things I wanted to get done within this world as well, even if it took me a couple days. Days 91 to 95. Luckily for us, unlike the last 100 days video that I did, we actually had around 10 days worth of time. So that's roughly around 3.3 in real life hours. That's how much time we had to work with. But luckily for us, the game at this time was actually on our side. Because after going to the end city portal frame, I go into the portal, lo and behold, after I lift my head up, I see the end city. Right next to it, one of the end ships. And if you guys didn't know, the end ships is where you get an elytra from. So y'all already know what time it is, you know, cue the dream music. Go on, go on. Honestly, honestly, some of these goals, I, I think these goals were actually pretty doable compared to the last time we did this. Compared to the last time we did this, it, we spent like a good, like... We spent a good, maybe, I'd like to say like a 15 minute interval trying to look for one of these. And this time we just spawn here. Okay, okay, time efficient, I see you. Oh god, it still hit me. It still hit me. See, this is why, this is why I gathered up food. Honestly, without this food, where would I have been? I'll, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll, t I'll you know what, screw it, I'll, I'll take it all. I'll take, I'll take it all, I don't mind, I don't care. Okay, good stuff, we're up here, we're up here now. We need to get over there, okay? That's our goal, to get over there as fast as we can. That is our goal. Speed bridge, speed bridge. <laughs> okay, I do want to change this out, <laughs> just in case, just in case, you know, you never know. That's, uh, that's five on my keyboard. Speed bridge, speed bridge, question mark. I hate speed bridging though, actually, like on this version of Minecraft, I absolutely despise speed bridging. Like genuinely, it's a hatred. It is a genuine hatred. Okay, just in case we fell from up there. I forgot, I forgot. There are creatures up here. Creatures that are not friendly. They're mean. Mean, 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 mean creatures. Okay. We got the head, we got the drag. Oh, you're joking, you're joking. You're freaking joking, dude. Yeah, so we might have fell, but you know, your boy water bucket clutched. Despite the fact that we actually fell off of it and had to scale the thing twice, we eventually got the elytra. We got the elytra and the dragon head. We were basically set for normal Minecraft achievements. The only things we had left to do was actually go out and find a warden and kill it, along with finding and taming an axolot. These two tasks are actually very contrasting to one another, but this was actually how I spent the last 10 days on this lovely world of ours. <laughs> you probably thought it was going to be netherite, right? Yeah, no. I want to actually give a little bit of attention to some of the things that are actually going to be added within 1.17. Now, to find the cave that one existed in, it took quite a bit, but eventually we did manage to find one. We were going down into the cave and we heard the noise that it actually emits. And by the way, if you guys didn't know, it's literally a two shot with full netherite armor. So I only have diamond armor, and it's with the bare minimum enchants, and this is how it went. Okay. It's just a little hard to hear. It's just a little hard to hear. Just pay attention to it, okay? Let's wait for this to leave. 
Did you guys hear that? Oh my gosh, dude. Hold on, wait, let me heal up. Okay. My main strategy is basically to burn him. That's all I really have so far. Because... I stored up on, I stocked up on a lot of buckets, right? I stocked up on a lot of lava buckets, so that's my main strategy. Oh my gosh. Oh shit. Okay. For the water. I got this, I got this. We just need to, we just need to burn it. That's my main goal. It's just to burn it. I don't think he notices me. Do I have any projectiles? I don't. Okay. I'm, I'm literally just gonna have to go down, aren't I? Just in case things go south. Just in case things go south. Wait, what? Doesn't it notice me? It doesn't see me. Oh, okay. Whoa. It doesn't notice me. Oh my god. No, 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 no. Can we hit it from here? Because I don't have netherite stuff. If I had netherite stuff, it, can, it could still two-shot me. And I don't know the radius of this thing or anything. Can I hit it? I can't hit it yet. Can it hit me from up here? <gasps> I can hit it. Can I? Wait. Can I? It can't one-shot me if I'm shielding, right? Right? No, I'm fine. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. Lava, 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 lava. Are we good? Are we good? Okay, we're good. We're good. Just burn. Just burn. Just burn. Just burn. Um, 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 I need to get back to safety. Oh. I think we're good. We just gotta lower it a bit. We just gotta lower it a bit. I feel like it... I think it disables my shield. Okay, we should be fine. We should be fine. It's coming towards me. Okay. Second lava bucket down. Second lava bucket down. Oh, God. Oh, God. Um... We need to get it to follow us. Okay. Yeah. We just have to burn it. We just have to burn it. Let's try getting a hidden. Oh. Okay. We got a hidden. We got a hidden. Can it hit us from up here? I don't think it can. But I don't want to risk it. Because what if it can and it's just... Oh! Oh! No, no, no! That was almost a one shot. Did we kill it? I think we killed it. Where did it Where did it go? I think I think we killed it. We killed the warden. Yo. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we freaking killed the warden, dude. <laughs> Holy. After defeating that, I was somewhat satisfied. There wasn't really much left to do, but I did run into one issue. I soon came to realize that axolots actually don't naturally spawn, which was a problem. So, instead what I decided to do was I sent it over to a programmer friend of mine and he made it so they actually spawn within these underground caves. Obviously, it's not the best system. It was a little buggy and kind of hard to find because I had to go through so many different caves until I found one of the underwater caves to begin with. But after I found it, what I saw was incredible. Upon going further into that cave full of water that I saw, I also witnessed floating fish. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Basically, when an axolot is put into the same body of water as other fish, they actually go and hunt fish because that is their prey. And so, by the time I reached there, there was a good couple dozen fish just floating above the water. It was an interesting sight, to, to put it at that. What I also decided to do, like the complete moron I am, is go right up to the axolot and right click it with fish as if it was supposed to be tamed like a dog. That was, that was just not the way to go. I then did some further research and found out that the concept of these axolots are actually in order to tame them you're gonna need to get a bucket and put them in a bucket and that's when they stay loyal to you. So that's exactly what I did. I decided to get back up, go back to one of my chests that I had upstairs and get a bucket out. After getting the bucket I decided to stuff it into a bucket and we got quickly out of that cave. After looking at the time we really didn't have that much left. It kind of took us a while to find these things 
So that was kind of a big problem. I really wanted to end it near the house or base that we built underneath ground. But instead, what I decided to do was after getting the axe a lot, I decided to test it a little bit and see if it actually follows me. Which in fact it did, to a point. Obviously it's not a land animal, I don't know why I tried making it follow me on land. I also thought of a really interesting plan. What if I made an underwater aquarium? Obviously not something crazy because I didn't have a lot of time left. But what if I ended the series with the axolot being in an aquarium in an ocean and me having a little cubicle next to it? <laughs> that, is, that is exactly what I did on the last day. I gathered sand, started smelting it up, and lo and behold, this is what we came with. You know, it's not the best. It's not the worst. Gotta give it that. Um, but I'm proud of it. Right? I'm proud of the progress that I made on this world and uh, I honestly had a, a lot of fun just trying to figure out what everything was and just exploring because honestly this caves and cliffs update is mostly about exploration and I do have to say Minecraft they outdid themselves with this one this one has to be by far one of my favorite updates well time to say goodbye alrighty if you guys managed to make it this far into the video thank you so so much thank you for helping me with retention and I'm glad you enjoyed the video, you know, found it entertaining enough to watch it till the end. I do have to say, if you guys want some information about how I pulled off some of the stuff in the video, feel free to wait until the very end of the video. But before we get to that, I actually want to know, do you guys enjoy this type of content? Because if so, be sure to leave a comment letting me know, because I'm not sure. I'm kind of in a mixture between 100 day videos and Minecraft butt slash Minecraft challenges. I'm not sure. Honestly, the Minecraft 100 day videos do a lot better. But um, I'm still thinking of other ideas. So if you guys have any suggestions as well, we'd love to see your guys' input in the comment section below. What, you're still here? Well, I mean, if that's the case, then you're probably interested in how I pulled off some of the stuff. To put it to you guys as simple as possible, uh, there was actually a usage of both 07 and 06 resources and assets, and we kind of somehow managed to merge them together without creating any problems because switching over to 07 actually removed some features from 06 but 06 also has a lot more features but is also missing certain core concepts of 07 if you guys know what i'm talking about it's the snapshot versions and the only other thing that i can think of that you guys might be questioning is yes we use the mod for the warden if you want to check that out it's in the description peace